I'm 27 years old now. This happened when I was 13, my sister was 9, and my brother was 6. We were raised by our single mother. She usually worked nights on the weekends. I was old enough to be home alone, so whenever my mom was at work, I was the one responsible for my siblings. This all happened on a Saturday night. For a little bit of context, let me give you the layout of my childhood home. When you walked into the living room, there was a hallway. To the right was the kitchen, then straight ahead was the downstairs bathroom. To the left was the stairway. Once you got upstairs, the first room straight ahead was the upstairs bathroom. The first room on the right was my room, and the second room on the right was my brother's. The room across from mine was my mom's, and my sister's room was right next to my mom's. Now here's the story. Before my mom left for work, she had gave me $20 for pizza, then left. I ordered the pizza, and we had a good night. About two hours after we ate, my sister went to the downstairs bathroom. When she came out of the bathroom, though, she said that she heard someone knock on the window. I believed her, and I told her that it was okay. Well, about an hour later, we heard yet another knock at the front door. I looked in the peephole, and I saw a dirty-looking man with long brown scraggly hair. He looked like he was homeless, but I couldn't really tell. I then began to look down, and I saw that he had a knife right in his hand. I then looked at my brother, and I told him to turn off the TV and all of the lamps. I told my sister to grab my flip phone, while I ran in the kitchen to grab a knife. I then told all of my siblings to go upstairs. I told my brother to go hide under his bed, and my sister to go hide in my mom's closet. I then hid in the upstairs bathtub. I then heard the front door smash open. It was a really flimsy old door, so it didn't really surprise me that that happened. I then heard doors opening downstairs. I started to dial 911. I heard the man start to come upstairs, and then heard the bathroom door open. I held one hand over my mouth, while the other was holding my flip phone. Very luckily, he didn't open the shower curtain. When the man left, I had started to worry about my siblings. I then got out of the bathtub and ran out of the bathroom. I began to run full force at the guy, stabbing him a few times. Right as this was happening, the police had finally arrived. I saw him trying to run out the front door, but the police were able to catch him. I then found my siblings, and the police called our mom. My mom came home immediately. She even quit that job because of this. So yeah, that's definitely the scariest thing that's ever happened to me while home alone, but hopefully the last. When I was nine, I was staying home alone. It was early morning and I had just gotten out of the shower and brushed my teeth. I put on my favorite outfit, set up a little area in the living room with a drink and a snack, and then turned on the TV to watch something. The phone rang. I went across the house to go answer it. The voice on the other end was, well, really familiar and really comforting for me. He asked me about my day so far and he made small talk. After about a minute or so, he then said, I like your outfit. Is pink your favorite color? I replied back with, Oh, thank you. No, it isn't. What were you planning on watching on TV? He asked. It took me a few seconds to understand what was happening as I was only nine years old and very naive. The voice on the other end of the phone then changed. It became deep and raspy and horrific. The voice then proceeded to describe all these horrible things that they wanted to do to me, and in detail. I went numb. My skin felt as if it were on fire, and my heart was racing. I had never been more terrified in my entire life. I slammed down the phone, and then I called my mom at work. I tried to explain what happened, and I'm not sure I was making much sense. She got on to me for answering the phone, and she told me to go back about my day. I remember trying to explain to her that he was watching me and that he told me what I had been doing and that he knew what I was wearing. I also mentioned that I was going to call 911 because I needed help. That isn't necessary. I'm not coming home. Just don't answer the phone and go watch TV, she said. And then I hung up. I was really confused and I was scared. I could feel his eyes on me. 
I pulled the curtains closed, and I raced around the house, torn between doing what I felt was right and doing what I had been told by my mother. This whole time the phone was ringing. The second it would stop, it would just start up yet again. The sound of the phone ringing would pulse through my entire body like electricity. It was practically paralyzing me. It was like I was frozen but also on fire at the same time. I waited for a pause in the ringing and called 911. I'm home by myself and I'm nine years old and someone's watching me and telling me they're going to kill me. I told the operator. She tried to keep me calm and she said that she would send help for me. I remember standing there and listening to this kind voice just trying to help me, but I could feel every scary movie scenario just playing out behind me. Was he creeping up behind me with a knife? Was he going to shoot me through a window? Was he going to throw a rock through the glass and open the door? I just didn't know. I couldn't breathe, and I couldn't feel my body. In a moment of panic, I set off the alarm to the house and ran outside. I remember this sense of relief, but also this overwhelming feeling of having a separation in my reality. The house felt small and dark and really dangerous and cold. Outside felt open as well as safe and warm. I could hear lawn mowers and the sounds of birds chirping. It was a beautiful break from that bone-chilling feeling of the phone. It was like I was watching a movie, and I could see myself experience both of these environments at the same time. A neighbor was pushing his child in a swing. He was concerned. He let me stand next to him, and he protected me. I could hear the sirens now, the blaring sound getting louder as they grew closer. It felt like it took an eternity, but the police finally arrived. An officer walked over to me, and he asked me what happened. I did my best to explain it, but so many of the words on the phone that were used were just so embarrassing. I couldn't bring myself to use such adult words to a police officer and his other words were just bone-chilling. I couldn't say those either. To this day, I can still hear my young voice repeating the words. He was watching me. He said he was going to kill me. Not long after, my mom's car pulled into the driveway. She for some reason decided to come home. She didn't look for me or come to speak to me. She just calmly got out and then walked over to the police officer. I was standing in the doorway from the house to the garage just facing the driveway. I could see my mom and the police officer. I was watching and trying to understand. Trying to figure out what was happening then I saw it she was laughing my face was swollen from tear my heart still racing and my skin was on fire and my mom was laughing what the hell was going on very slowly I crept a little closer and I've been overheard I'm so sorry about this I guess she just got scared buying home alone and overreacted, I'm really sorry what the hell's happening, what did I do wrong, did I imagine this was this a dream should I not have called 911, did I actually overreact my memory of what happened, after the is a little hazy, I remember refusing to stay home alone, and the sound of the phone ringing just rippling through my body, it wasn't something I liked discussing, I refused to repeat what had been said to me by the voice on the phone, my mom decided that she knew who did it, but she didn't even know the details. There was an investigation on one was questioned. She told me it was a boy who was the same age as me who lived across street. I knew that was impossible, but on matter how much I protested it, I was always told that it was him many years later after I was in a bolt with my own children. We were at Christmas, everyone was in the living room and I'd gone into the back bedroom to change a diaper as I was walking out of the room and back into the living room. I could hear my mom laughing her voice, as if she'd been telling a joke the faces of everyone else in the room, told different story discomfort anguish shock fear, yet she was still laughing it felt as if it was walking in slow motion one of my older children had actually stopped me from entering the living room, and sort of pushed stopped me from entering the living room and sort of pushed me back into the room that I had just come out of. She just told the story of you being home alone, and the man threatening to kill you. She told it like it was a joke, or something like some funny story from your childhood. My child told me to this day. I never leaned who it was that called me. I deal with my fear of ringing phones and phone conversations on a daily basis. I grew up in rural areas my entire life. 
Whether it was beef farms in Tennessee or living in the middle of nowhere Florida, I've done it all. Growing up without access to most commonalities we've grown accustomed to. Yeah, that's right. We had no internet, no TV, and yep, you guessed it, no cell phones. I know, the horror, right? I like to think of us as the last regeneration before the internet age. Not to say dial-up wasn't around, but most of us at the time didn't really have access to it. But honestly, it really wasn't that bad. I mean, outside of the long, boring summer days where we'd be cooking alive in the fields, living out in an old Civil War cabin in the middle of nowhere Tennessee definitely shoot out some interesting experiences. This story is going to be one of many that I share. That is, if you all enjoy this one that is. The story starts off like any other, really. It was a typical Friday night, and my brothers and I were home alone. Being that we didn't have much of anything to entertain ourselves with, we began playing manhunt in and around the house. Most of the time we opted to stay indoors as it was pitch black outside. For a bit more context, our cabin was situated on top of a rather steep hill that had a long winding driveway running down it. Our cabin had a basement level, the main level where most of the house was, and the upstairs that only had my room. We also had a back deck that was situated about 10 to 12 feet up in the air, if I had to guess. Anyway, back to the story at hand. It was pitch black outside, and going much further than our porch at night wasn't really something anyone enjoyed doing out there. The game was fun, but was already getting pretty monotonous with the little room we had inside. At this point I had the bright idea to wander off outside, and then hide on the roof to make the game more interesting. Well, this would soon be one of the biggest regrets in my life. At first, everything seemed fine. It was rather cold, and it was nearing fall, and the weather was just starting to change. There was a slight breeze, and the air was really crisp and calming. After a few minutes of sitting up on the roof, though, something felt off. I had been practically mesmerized by the sound of crickets and cicadas. I realized, though, that all the noise had suddenly stopped. This seemed very odd to me, but at the same time, being as naive as I was at the time, I didn't realize that this only meant something bad was going to happen. I sit there as still as possible for a moment, trying to listen as closely as I can. I just can't seem to hear anything aside from the slight breeze through the leaves. Then as quickly as the silence came, an eruption of noise came from the other end of the roof. For a bit more detail, we had a metal roof at the time, making it very easy to hear when things walk on the roof. It sounded like something had landed on the opposite side end of the roof. I looked over, but could see nothing. This of course left me rather unnerved, and my first thought was to exit the situation. Before panicking fully, I remembered it could be my brothers messing with me, since surely they would have given up on looking for me by now. I opened up my window and called my brothers. They both ran up the stairs shouting and complaining that the roof was off limits. As my older brother got to me, I had asked him if he had been messing with me and making the noise on the roof. He of course denied this and wanted to come up and investigate. So, he and I slowly made our way to the middle of the roof and listened for a moment. Everything went quiet around us as it had earlier. At this point, I was already on edge and ready to karate chop a demon right in the neck if I had to. We hear what sounds like a pounding noise on the far end of the roof in the opposite direction of where we were standing. After what I think were three sets of six pounding noises, it charged us. I think it did anyway. It sounded like hooves were running on the metal roof, but the only issue was we couldn't see a thing. The entire roof was clear, aside from us that is. But somehow we were hearing these footsteps. It quickly approached us and began running circles around us. I held my arms out to try and see if I could feel anything, but I couldn't. The weirdest part of it all though was that I could feel the vibrations of the footsteps all around us, but I couldn't see or feel anything in the air. These footsteps circled around us for what seemed like many minutes, but were probably no more than a minute or so at most. It suddenly stopped circling us, and we could hear the steps draw off the roof and then disappear into thin air. We quickly ran inside, 
locked all the windows and doors, and huddled up inside, freaked the hell out. So I'm a big horror fangirl. I'm 20 years old, and over the past year, I've been collecting from the figures to the masks, to even life-size. I'm won't currently say a story was terrifying, or anything, but to me, it basically saved me. I'll try and make it simple. I'm a big Michael Myers fan, and last October, I bought a life-size figure of him. Oh, and a Chucky doll too. And not just one of the cheap ones, the replica-looking ones. Some may call me crazy, but what's not to love about horror, right? I keep everything stored away at the moment, apart from the life-size Michael, which he stands around six foot. He's not a cheap-looking guy either. He looks like the real deal. The replica mask, real coveralls with blood, and even a knife too. He stands in my room right next to my bed. And even though it used to creep me out seeing a dark black figure in my room, I eventually got used to it. Like to the point where I actually felt comfortable around him. I don't move him anywhere else though, as nobody in the house really liked him. Anyway, now that that's all out of the way, here's the thing that happened. So last year when I received him, I was home alone watching films downstairs, when I then heard a thud upstairs. I froze as I didn't really know what to think. I slowly got up and went up to my room, and then instantly heard the thuds from the downstairs door. I had absolutely no clue what the hell was going on, because I was the only one there. I quietly sat in the dark, as I didn't keep the lights on. And I listened. I heard what sounded like men talking, and then I realized somebody came in. And then I didn't lock the door. The TV was also left on, so they had to have known I was there. Anyways though, there I was sitting face to face with the Michael figure in the dark. I heard the footsteps coming up the stairs to my room, while I sat in the corner with my head spinning. I felt like I wanted to pass out. I even started to sweat a little. My door then opened, and there I'd seen a hooded figure walk in and head straight towards me. He had something in his hand, something sharp, like a pocket knife. I was leaning against the cold wall more and more, wanting to grab something, until out of nowhere, Michael's arm then started moving. Bear in mind it was still dark, so this guy had no clue that Michael was behind him, until he heard it move. I also want to add that it wasn't an electrical noise, it was the material of the arm rubbing together. The man then turned around and instantly yelled. And I mean, I've never seen a man run so fast in his life. The man then started yelling, Go, get the hell out of here. To some other guy that was in a van outside. I stood up and watched them as they drove off. I then noticed a crack in my window. Obviously, these freaks were throwing rocks in my window, possibly to distract me but I didn't care about that. I turned around and just stared at Michael because I really had no clue that he could even move. I started investigating and then realized he was an animatronic the entire time. But I was thinking he moved just at that exact moment and basically saved my life that night. I can even laugh about it now because of how scared the guy was. I got my window repaired and did mention to the police that I had a break in but there was really nothing they could do about it. But it was still reported, just in case they tried anywhere else. Luckily, nothing was taken, as there was really nothing valuable downstairs. Obviously, this Michael Myers looks like a real person, and anyone that looks at it, especially in the dark, gets the creeps by it. I know it sounds insane, and maybe even funny, but this incident really happened, and I'm so damn thankful that I have him in my room. I never even once thought it would save my life like this, especially if he never moved. I always wonder how he moved anyway. I mean it happened all by itself. Was it some kind of coincidence? I'll never know, but thank you Michael. God only knows what that guy would have done to me if you weren't here.